<laughs> right, well, look, I've got the graveyard shift. So what we're going to do, because energy, let's be honest, has dipped a little bit just because of life. So I'm going to insist that energy goes up. So let's stand up, right? Come on. A little bit cheesy, a little bit American. Hopefully no Americans in the room. Right, okay, how are you feeling? Feeling a bit better? Right, hands in the air, everybody. Let's just, let's just loosen up a little bit. Turn around and then sit back down and we can get started. There we are, there we are. Right, we are ready to go. Okay, the power of the big band idea. Right, we've listened a lot today about tactics. We've listened a lot about ideas and tools and tips. I'm gonna kind of get us back a little bit to basics to the simplicity which I think all businesses need, right? Because business is complex, right? We're embracing the complexity, we're not denying that, it is complicated. The problem is, is that if we're gonna stand out in competitive markets, if we are gonna be noticed, we have to cut through the noise. And to cut through noise, you can't be complicated. You can't be filled with jargon. You can't confuse people. You can't seem the same as everybody else. You have to be different, you have to be bold, and you have to stand out. And that is where the power of the big idea comes in, which is the subject you'll be pleased to know of our talk. So before we get into that, first point is we've, we've talked a little bit about brand today. Now I've got something perhaps a little bit, I don't know, controversial to say, but, but for me the brand is not your logo, your fonts, and your colors, right? That isn't your brand. That's part of your brand, but that isn't your brand. I define brand as the meaning that people attach to you and your offer, all right? It exists in their hearts and their minds. And of course, the logo is like a signpost to that meaning, and the colors and the fonts help them remember who you are and what you're about. But, but who you are and what you're about is who you are. And how, what you do for them and how you make them feel is the most, I would suggest, important thing. What you actually achieve for them, how you overcome their problems. So for me, branding, which is the game I'm in, and I'm sure you know, everybody I would suggest in business should be in this game, is the game of the management of meaning. Right? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to manage the right meaning so that ultimately all of the meaning, all of the signals that we put out go into our audience's mind and they, hopefully, the right audience thinks the right thing about us and dips their hand in their pocket and pays us some money. That's ultimately what we're trying to do. So brands, you know, if you think about it, there's a, there's a long word called, you like long words, don't you, Dan? So anthropomorphize, right? That's a good word, isn't it? That's a good word for me. Lad from London, I can, I can speak these things. Um, what does it mean though? Anyone know what anthropomorphize means, if I can say it? Anyone know? Uh, when we give a human attribute to something that isn't human. Yes, we personify things, we think about it like a human and it has human attributes. And that's basically how our brains, the psychologists tell us, think about the companies that we run, okay? That's how consumers think about us, the right kind of bits of our brains light up as if we're a collective kind of person, right? So when you think about brands, just pick your favorite brand. What's your favorite brand of whiskey or anything? Uh, car, what's your favorite car? Uh, Audi. Audi, that's funny from someone who drives a BMW, isn't it? That's for work. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> He's a chauffeur, I was talking to him earlier. Anyway, okay, Audi, right? When we say Audi, Okay, immediately you might think, oh, okay, a, a logo. Some people might think a logo. But ultimately, if you think about it, there's, in their advertising, in their comms, they speak a certain way, don't they? They dress a certain way. They look a certain way. Their cars are shaped a certain way. Their, their photography looks a certain way. All of these things come, the videography, it all has a certain strap line. It all feels a certain way. They behave in a certain way as a business. You know, when you go into an Audi showroom, you would expect a certain amount of behavior from the staff, from the environment that, that you find yourself in through the buying process ultimately they do something for us so ultimately the car itself will do something and the whole experience to purchase the car the after sales all of that stuff it's it's doing something it's solving a problem it's helping us get from A to B and looking wonderful doing it there we are um, and finally the, the brand Audi will exist on the back of a set of beliefs and real fans of that brand will understand what those beliefs are and they will expect the company to align and behave and act in accordance to those values uh, and so they trust what the brand's about. So all of those are signals that Audi pings off and they come into your audience's mind. Now if you're like Steve there, they come in and they light all the right buttons and Steve's like, right, I'm going to dip my hand in my pocket, I'm going to buy that Audi. That's the difference. 
That's the difference. But other people might be like, whoa, I'm not going to do that. I like who said Volvo earlier. There we go. So, you know, there's, different, there's a different thing. But the point is you've got to know who you're trying to talk to. You want to understand the meaning that you want to send out to them. And you want to create real value, right? I'm, 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 I'm sick to death of lies, right? I can't stand businesses that say one thing and do something different. And leaders that think they'll get away with it. Because quite frankly, you're, you won't. Right? We're in a social media world. People are going to find out. Your staff are going to become disheartened. You yourself, your soul will be eaten out. You know, truth. Let's get back to what's real and, and do something that's true. So for me, brand, we've talked a little about with Lizzie earlier, culture and everything. For me, brand is really it should influence your culture. Yes, your products and your services. Yes, your customer experience. But also, and, and then right at the end, the veneer at the end, the marketing and comms and your logo and your brand identity and your look and feel, all of that should be truthful so that the right signals are sent to the customer. So that's my little preamble, right? Let's get into this now. What's coming up? Well, I'm going to talk to you about this idea of a big idea of a big idea. And I've even got, added value, a bit of a mini workshop we could do. So hopefully everybody's up for doing that. Um, so we'll, we'll do that together. And then I, I kind of really want to talk about, well, what, why would your businesses really need a big idea once we've understood what it is? And then how could we actually get to the point where we come up with a big idea that is useful and, and relevant to what we're about? And finally, I'm going to share some ideas on how to activate your big idea. Does that sound good? Great. I've got some nods. Come on, let's go. Right, so what is a big idea? Well, <clears throat> this is how I define a big idea. It's the reason the brand will be attractive to its audiences. That's it, simply put. It's actually the one coherent thought that binds all of your business strategy, all of the thinking behind your business together in a way that you can communicate powerfully and simply to anybody. So. For me, a brand big idea, it really should in, inform, if not be, your purpose in business. It should inform, if not be, your vision, and it should for, inform, if not be, your mission. Now, if you don't know the difference between these three, just really quickly, your purpose is your reason for being. Your vision is what you're trying to move the world towards, like an, a future that doesn't exist right now. And your mission, ultimately, is how you're going to get there. And depending on your stage of business, business, what type of business you're in, you might emphasize different elements of those three kind of concepts. But for me, the big idea will sit somewhere in, in one of those kind of pockets. And you need to pull it out of there, and you need to make it simple, and you need to be able to communicate it. And that's what we're going to be thinking about today. Here's some things about what, I, you know, what a big idea is. It should be simply expressed. We're so full of jargon and algorithms. Oh, just, just simple. I, I, I am embracing complexity, don't get me wrong. But the complexity and by itself, in my view, needs to be simplified so we understand it a bit more. Like, how can we just clarify behind everything what we're trying to do. So simply expressed. Now here's an interesting thing. This is, this, is, this is something I really believe. Because the big idea sits at the top of all your thinking in your business, it should be what's called omnidirectional. It should work without for customers, and it should rally your people within. If you can find a big idea that does that, you're winning. Because you can put it on your flag, you can march forward, and you'll find top talent wants to join you because they want to help get where you want to go. But also customers are like, hey, I know, I can see where that business is going. I want to be part of that. I don't mind buying that. I don't, I don't mind being part of that, that community, that tribe, if you like. I always think it's got to be social. It's got to be bigger than your little you know, your, your own selfish needs. It's got to be something about the earth, the planet, the world. You're trying to give birth to something big. So it's a big idea. So what is it? How are you going to impact society or, 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 or the earth in general? It's got to be beyond making money. I think, and I don't know what you think, but I think we get things wrong in business. I think we think commercials first, and then we try and do some of the stuff I'm talking about in order to back up the commercials. The truth is it doesn't work like that, right? What has to happen is you have to think of something of value, and then the money comes behind it. 
but we get it wrong. We, we focus on the money, particularly established businesses. We get stuck in quarters and you know, financial planning and all this stuff. And don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not, we're in business. We're, you know, I understand that. You know, I, I believe in that, that system. But I just think there's an overemphasis sometimes on that. Let the finance people worry about that. If you're in marketing like we are, let's think about the big ideas. Let's think about the future. Let's focus on that. And then let's use the money in order to get us there. All right. Next one. Sorry, I'm preaching a bit. Get down, get down, calm down. Right. Next one. Um, so it's got to be more than making money. Um, it's got to be bigger than the goal. You know, some people I think, you know, you say, what's your, what's your vision or whatever? They're like, well, our vision is to be the number one, you know, whatever in our sector by the year 2022 or something. And you're like, well, well, 2022 is gone anyway, but you know, by 2025, you'd be like, well, that's great. But what happens if you get there? What's beyond that? Give me something big, you know? So don't have a goal, like have it beyond a goal. Have it something really, you know, really exciting. Um, it should be evidenced. I mean, this is something that may have to come after if you're just starting out, but it should be evidenced in what your company actually does, in, in your services, in your products. What are you actually trying to achieve? Sometimes you come up with a big idea and then you use that to fuel the change in the business required to get to redesigning that customer experience, re, you know, innovating. But ultimately, it has to be evidenced because as I say, truth, is so important. You know, if you just say stuff and there's nothing backing it up, there's no reasons to believe, your people will leave, your customers will leave. And finally, I quite like, this is my suggestion, but I think the big idea should kind of be like a call to action, like a rally cry. Like it's on the flag that you're planting on top of your mountain and everybody that believes that will come to that mountain. That's what you want. You want it to be screamed from the rooftops. So here's some examples. You might say, Matt, this is lovely. Give me some examples. So, okay, so you could argue these are mottos, these are slogans, these are purpose statements. These are, I don't really care what you call these, but for me, they're big ideas, right? These, are, these tick most of the boxes, if not all of the boxes of that criteria that I mentioned just now. So Amazon, right? Be Earth's most customer-centric company. You think, that's a big idea. Right? Like, so that, that's almost like an evergreen idea. They're always going to be trying to be more customer centric and they're going to try and make sure that's, that, that's helpful and relevant to us as customers. Does it work for me as a customer? Yeah, absolutely. Does it work for me as an employee? Perhaps less so, but it's still something I want to be involved in because it's such a big, big idea. I love Airbnb, belong anywhere. Right? What a lovely, big idea that is. So I've got a property. I want my tenants to belong, feel like, well, not tenants, but I want my you know, tourists that come and stay in my property to feel like they belong. So it, it appeals to me. I'm, I'm a tourist going to somewhere. I want to feel like I belong. So it fits on a number of levels. You see why it's a big idea. Um, obviously, we've got some others on there. I'm not going to go through all of them. I think um, I quite like, you know, the North Face is another one. See how evergreen this is. Never stop exploring. You know, it's a human thing to explore and be curious. You ne they, never, they never want, they're, they're sort of a rally cry, isn't it? Come with us and we're gonna help you with your exploration. You're never gonna stop and we're gonna help you along that journey. So if that appeals to you, that's what you, you know, that, that, that's the rally cry that will connect with you on that real deep human level. And again, internally, like if I'm a garment creator and I'm like into kind of trekking gear and that's my kind of field, I want to I want to work for the North Face because their whole mission and their whole vision and their whole big idea is to give me work so I can continue doing my artisan work, creating uh, and living, you know, living into my, my skill set that I, that I'm all about. So you see how that, that kind of fits together. Um, right, so the other, other ones we got, think different from Apple, obviously, big ideas, just do it, huge, you know, organize the world's information, Google. If I'm a geek and I'm into, you know, data and all that stuff, that, that internally I'd love that. Externally, we love Google because it's organized the world's information. So you see how these ideas are big, they sit at the top, and you can see that actually what these companies do and how they've leveraged some of these concepts to actually drive change and create and innovate and will continue to do so is important. Now you might say, Matt, this is lovely. These are all massive multi-corporation American companies. I just, you know, I'm just here in Lincoln. Poor me. What, what can I do? I say, well, look, it, to me, it doesn't matter if you're a massive company or if you're a solopreneur, you can still do the work to come up with your big idea. 
So I do work with lots of businesses, all shapes and sizes, and I was going to share some of the big ideas that I've helped leadership teams create. I'm not going to go through all of them, you'll be pleased to know, but here's some, here's some interesting ones. I was working with a research lab, predominantly based in Swindon, okay? And this research lab did a lot of sort of testing on water, water testing, basically. And in their sector, what we found when we did the due diligence was, not the due diligence you're talking about, but, um, you know, the, the more creative stuff, where we looked at the marketplace and how the other uh, competitors were positioning themselves, it was all about, like, our lab has this capacity and this testing equipment and can do these types of very complicated tests that I wouldn't even feel jargon that I wouldn't even be able to articulate to you today. And that was their sector. And that's how they, they thought about, you know, that's how they should position themselves. So we went in, I went in, and I talked to customers, I talked to a lot of um, their employees, and I was talking about, well, what value are we actually creating? What is the leadership ambition here? What are we actually trying to achieve? Simply put, don't give me jargon and all that stuff. Just talk to me simply. And what we eventually created was this concept, which we coined creating a better tomorrow. So you think, well, that's a bit obvious, isn't it? But in their sector, that is a very unusual way of expressing what they're about. And that is what they're trying to do. All the tests that they're trying to do, they're trying to improve the, the, the environment. They're trying to improve conditions. They were creating a better tomorrow. So that worked brilliantly for their customer base. It also works brilliantly internally. If you're a scientist and you're into the tests and the labs that they, that they uh, work in in that field, you wanna, you're doing that so that you can create a better world for your kids. So once we'd settled on this, like they got super lit up, super excited, super inspired. Um, we did a launch into the company. We had a video with, uh, you know, you can imagine, I can't play it for you because, uh, by the way, for confidentiality, I can't tell you who these businesses are. But we had a video and we had um, some kids from the company, the, not from the company, the children of people who worked at the company, who volunteered and, you know, everything was done, uh, you know, in accordance with all the requirements. But they basically, they had a voiceover that was their kids talking about the future talking about the better tomorrow and um, the, you know it got standing ovation from the whole company we launched it externally they're using it we, we chose five big goals for the company over the next five years based on this big idea and so you can see how internally it motivated them and then they've gone external with it so they can promote their, their brand and the internal and the external unite together so it truly is something that they're about it's a big idea they're committed to. And, then they get, and I'm absolutely positive. I know in the, the 12 months they've been using it, their profits have soared. I'd like to take credit for that. I'm sure it's not just my idea that's helped them with that. But, um, but the point is, is that it unites everybody. It aligns everybody and it's powerful. So there's loads of other ones on there. I, I did some work in London with a, um, a preventative healthcare clinic for high net worth individuals. So if you had 10,000 pounds, you could pay that to them, go to their clinic, they would scan you and prod you and do all the things that they needed to do in one day, which is quite unusual because usually you'd spread it out over months to have tests like that. And then you get your report by an actual doctor who's been with you throughout the whole day and they tell you basically, hopefully you're all fine and, but you need to stop drinking alcohol, whatever it might be. I'm looking at Mike there for that one and he knows why. So, um, so that, that's the thing. So that, that, that was what they were doing. But again, their messaging was super complex. They were talking about all the techniques and the tests and all of this stuff. So after doing the work, what we came out with was this concept. Be at your best. And you say, Matt, that's a really simple concept. Yeah, it is a simple concept. Everybody can understand that. You know, I want to be at my best, so I'm going to go through my preventative healthcare checks to make sure that I'm performing at my best. And if I'm a high net worth individual, that is something that I want to do, because usually I'm running businesses or I'm an athlete or something like that. If I'm working for them, what am I all about as a medical practitioner? I want to be at my best. You know, they wanted to recruit the top talent. So they wanted to provide all the, 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 the support and the, the training and they wanted to get the best. So that would appeal to me. So you see how that is omnidirectional again, it appeal, appeals across both. Now I'm not going to go through all of those. I can talk if anyone wants to about any of the areas on there as we go through. But I think you get, you get the point. The big idea encapsulates and should stick all of the business idea, uh, initiatives together into one clear thing and it should be something you should be able to go external with so that you can do it. So here's our little mini workshop, you ready? We're gonna have a go. 
at your business's big idea. Now, don't worry, it doesn't have to be finely tuned. This is a, a, a framework I like to use, and it's, it, it is kind of, this is a sort of a longer version, but I, I think if you do this, you'll find that your big idea will be tucked into this. So you'll be able to extract something out of this. So what I tend to do is get leadership teams together, mainly, having done some work, and I'll talk about that in a minute, and then get them to fill this in in a workshop scenario, usually in groups of two or three. And then we come back together and we read them all out, we put them on the wall, and we'll find that inside there somewhere is the truth of the big idea that we want to really go for into the future. So here it is, very simple. I'm a simple person, I hope you can tell that. So you want to fill this out. Our idea is to, what are you contributing to the world? What is that? Define that. So that there's some sort of impact What's the impact of what you're doing? And again, I don't care that you want to get rich. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the impact to your customers, the impact that people engage with you. And here's the real kicker, because why? Why, why are you doing this? What's broken? What do you believe in? So I'm going to give you two minutes. I'm going to get a quick glass of water. Two minutes, and I'm going to come back up here, and then I'm going to pick on random people. Well, I'm going to ask for volunteers first, but if I get no volunteers, I'm going to pick on people. So there we are, two minutes, go. Have a drink. It's all right. Go well. We have done some little. Um, um, oh, thanks, mate. We've done some little zoom ins. And hopefully. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, there'll be loads of clips of that. Yeah, there'll be loads. So, here's our little mini workshop. Ready? So there you go. Oh, actually, I really appreciate you doing that. Thank you. Yeah, we can just chop it up into little bits for you. But they're all there. Thanks so much. That is brilliant. Yeah. Cheers, man. Thank you very much. Cool, man. So I was a bit rabbit in the headlights there. No, it's my fault. It's all right. I did pick on you a bit there. No, no, no. I know the opposite. I know the I thought it was funny because you told me I'm the only one you drive a 7 Series BMW. I know, don't you? I know. I anyway, know. There we are. I don't mind. I go on holiday in and out. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Okay, one minute. Let's go. So it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, don't look back. <laughs> Thirty seconds. Have you got it? No. Huh? You don't want me to do it. I won't pick on you. Yeah. You pay me later in bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right okay now pre i appreciate you could spend a long time on this and i've not given you much time all right but you know that's the world we live in and sometimes here's a little thing right when the deadline monster goes running around sometimes your brain really focuses actually and you can come out with some of your best stuff i find most people have you ever did, did you ever do this at school when you knew you had homework you'd be like oh i've got two weeks for that homework You'd leave it like, wouldn't you? Like, let's be honest, till the, the, the hour before. And then you'd be like, Phew, and get it done. And uh, that, well, I was like that anyway. And I always used to find that was fine. You know, I'd sort of procrastinate a lot. So just a little tip, get the deadline monster running around. It makes, it does, it does the world of good. But here's the thing. I appreciate, we're thro I'm throwing you in at this. You might want to craft this and, and look at this later. The other thing is, is when I, when, I, when I call on, if I call on you, to think about the fact that this is your personal view, right? But when you're building a brand, it's never just about one person. There's always a leadership team, there's always customers, there's always staff usually involved. And so, you know, you might want to run this exercise with your team to see what comes out. So, do I have any volunteers? Does anyone want to try it? Yes, Andy, let's go. Um, so, our big idea is to make the workplace a, a more engaging and fulfilling place, so that the world will become a happier place. Because there are far too many reasons to be miserable. Well, I think we should give Andy a round of applause for that. That's great. Now, now obviously, at the moment, I, uh, that's long, right? 
in there you might be able to pull some elements out and just kind of make the world a better place right and build your messaging and all the other stuff cascade it out of something simple like that that's it any other volunteers at the back I've got my, my one is uh, bringing the world more time for life. Nice, uh, nice. Love it. Round of applause. Bringing the world more time for life. That's good. Yes, Dave. Um, so mine is um, build better visual brands so that companies stand out and sell more because imagery is the new digital currency. Ooh, very good. Round of applause. There we are. So you can see in that you could pull elements out of that that are really powerful and exciting and, and you know and you could you could really build your messaging and all of your thinking around that. And if you wanted to scale, I don't know if that's in your plans, but you know, say you were gonna recruit another ten photographers, right? Whatever that big idea is, you recruit against that, you make sure they're onboarded into it. What does it really mean? You'll have structures and then initiatives behind it, and that's how you can really use it to, to motivate everyone forward. Well, great. That is really, really good. I'm sure everybody's got other ideas as well. Um, but thank you for all those people. And, and hopefully that's use, a useful tool you can take back and really think about as we go through. So we've sort of touched on this. Well, why, why would a business need a big idea? Like, you'd be like, well, isn't this just a bit of fluff, Matt? A bit of kind of, you know, marketing veneer stuff. Like, I would say only if you use it that way. You know, the thing is with like, for example, brand values get a lot of rap. Like people are like, oh, I just, I just slap them on the wall. I don't really believe in them. That's because we're not using them effectively to make decisions and to fuel change in our businesses. So I would say all of these things, if used correctly, will really, you know, really make an impact. But it's down to you as the leaders, usually in the business, to leverage some of this strategic thinking and make it real. And so that, become, that doesn't happen by accident. You have to design that. You have to set cadence. You have to, be, uh, you have to have checks and balances against that within reason. But you need to kind of reference it. You need to use it, utilize it as you go, as you go forward. So the number one thing I would say, why a big idea is really helpful, and this is usually why I'm, I'm sort of wheeled in to leadership teams, is because they're not aligned. And they need to align at the top. But then once, it's, once, you're, once you've got everybody saying, yeah, that is our big idea, that's what we believe in. And, and you, know, you can build you know, roadmaps and visions off the back of it and all that stuff. But then that needs to come out into the organization and beyond into customers. So it's true and you've got to align the whole lot. And that's so hard to do. I think the hardest job, you know, there's a reason why CEOs are paid the most, chief executive officers, because they've got to execute on everything that the, that the leadership team decides. And the execution, the actually making it happen, is what's the hardest. And without a big idea, I think you're kind of fighting. If you've got 15 big ideas, everyone's like running around like, what, what am I supposed to do here? Where am I focused? You have one big idea, you say, we're in this game, we're gonna make this happen, and, and then we split out from there, it makes it much easier to align. Clarity, really, really important to be clear. What do I stand for in the market as a brand? Where am I going? As an employer brand, what do I stand for? What am I trying to get all our people to achieve? Really important. And of course, there's our lovely word, you know, we, we embrace complexity, but ultimately, if we stay in the complex area and we don't simplify it for people, they get confused. They can't remember it. You know, I think I, I see a lot of stuff, even for customers' perspective, like, you know, you, you go to some companies' websites and they're throwing like 20 messages at you. You're just like, I don't really know what this is all about. Like, give me one big compelling idea and then I can, I can see if it's for me or not and I can move down from there. So that's important, you know, that we, we simplify it so that people can understand, recall, and it can influence decision making. And I'm talking macro decisions from the leadership team, mergers and acquisitions or whatever it might be, who we, where we're gonna go, what regions we're gonna play in, whatever, big decisions. But, but micro decisions as well. You know, how people are answering the phone. Is it in accordance with the big idea? It's really important. So the big idea helps to unite the leadership. That's really important. Leaders have got to lead. So we've got to be united in that. We don't want to confuse everybody. It simplifies. It makes sense of our commercial initiatives. You know, it shouldn't be that we'd, we're, we, want to make, we want to scale to 10 million, so um, we're going to backfill it with some ideas. No, no, no. What's the big idea? And then say, well, we're going to 10 million to help us achieve that big idea. 
It should enhance communications and experiences, both internally and externally. Attract and retain customers and employees. Build our culture and stimulate our innovation as a business. That's the power of a big idea. And it, I know we're in the marketing conference, right? So I thought I'd just, you know, it wouldn't be a marketing conference if we didn't mention the seven, uh, you know, how we got there? Six, four, two, four, five Ps, that's the one, um, of marketing, right? So you've got a big idea, and these are the levers, isn't it? As marketeers, we tend to reference it, being able to pull in order to improve our commercial success. You've got a big brand idea, articulated simply and clearly. You'll be able to use it, you see, to think about, well, are we, are we going to kind of inf tweak our people or our promotion of our, our products and, and, and services or our product innovation or our price or the places we're going to put it? So that's, uh, that's that. You might say, well, that's lovely, Matt. That's all great. I get it. But, but I just can't think. Did anybody have, like, when I, when I put it out there, was everyone like, I think Daniel was like, oh, this is tr tricky, isn't it? This is difficult. Did anyone get sort of stuck and think, I can't do this exercise? Please, Matt, bearded Matt, don't pick on me. Was anyone like that? Getting a couple of nods. So if that was you, you might be thinking, well, how on earth do I find my big idea? So this is how I do it with, with, with businesses. The first thing that I would suggest that you do is you... You don't look at yourself, right? You look outside of yourself. Because if brand is the meaning that other people attach to you, then surely it behooves you to go and actually understand what they think about you right now. So I don't care whether you're a solopreneur or you're a big corporate. This is a good exercise to listen. Always listen. So where do we go first? Well, we're going to go to customers first, okay? The, you know, the, a business exists to create customers, Peter Drucker said. And that's true. There's no other reason initially for a business. When you boil it all down, it's as simple as that, serving somebody else, to give custom to them. So, you know, some of the things that I always say to people, go and ask um, your customers, and particularly your top customers that you enjoy working with, why do they buy from you? And then shut up just, you know, when you've asked that question, because we tend to answer it for them. No, no, no. Listen to what they say. I did this exercise some years ago, and I was actually quite shocked at why people bought from me. I'll tell you that story later over a beer. But there we are. So customers, why do they buy from us? What do they want? What are their needs? What are their problems? And how are we helping them with that? So, so find that out. I then go usually to the marketplace, to the perceived competition. One, by the way, one of the things you can ask customers is, if you didn't buy from me, wh where else would you go to solve your problem? They're your, that, whatever they say then is your true competition. We try, you know, we're taught in business school to segment markets and you know, look at verticals and all this stuff. And there's, there's a place for that, and don't get me wrong. But your true competition is in the alternatives that your customers will have on their tables when they're trying to solve the problem that you're, you're in the, the, the game to fix. That's your true competition. And again, the answers may not actually be uh, what you think. So listen to what they say and, and then go and look at that competition and figure out, well, how are those competitors positioning themselves? How are they different from us? Why is our solution better? You know, one of the bits of research I did recently for a company was that we asked the customers, well, what is the alternative to outsourcing your business to, to the brand? And they said, actually, our internal team, our internal team could do this work. So that's interesting, right? So, so what is, why, why would you not go to your internal team that you own and control? And there's a multitude of reasons why an external brand was a better fit than their internal team. But their internal team's already always there. So, but you've got to understand why, what's the value that you're offering against that competition. And then finally, you know, I think that's where you start looking within. And I tend to start just generally if you're a bigger organization, like from top to bottom, like get a snapshot, people that have been there a while, people that have just joined, graduates, as well as managers and people managers and all sorts. But what, why did they join you in the first place? Why do they stay? Is it just money? Hopefully not. But if it is, that's something we need to know about. Why did they sort of join you in the first place? What attracted them? And, and where are they hoping what the company will go? Now, from all of that, you really want to get insights. So you can have the raw data. That's great. But raw data on its own is, is dry and dull and boring, right? And nobody really acts on it, in my view. They act on the meaning that they place to that data. So that's where we pull out insights. The ability to perceive clearly or deeply a penetrating understanding as of a complex situation or problem. So we've got to acknowledge the complexity, but try and bring out meaning in that so that we can then make, take action. 
And then armed with all that, what I tend to recommend is let's get the leadership team away from the business as usual and let's, um, let's ask some big brand questions. Now, someone mentioned Simon Sinek, I think it was you know, earlier on, and I've literally stolen his stuff um, and repurposed it. So this is my brand strategy triangle. He has a golden circle, I mine's a triangle. He misses one key element and I've adapted it a bit. But he talks, as, as we looked at earlier, about the why. Like he has a book called Start With Why, and it's really good. And if you've not watched the Simon Sinek TED Talk, Start With Why, definitely watch it because it will blow your mind. What he talks about is the fact that um, if you've got a, a comprehensive and um, inspirational why, it, it engages others in what you're doing emotionally, okay? So why you do what you do will, um, will rally people around it. I like to ask this question to leaders particularly. Why do we exist beyond making money, right? The gut response of a leader is, why oh, we exist at the moment to scale to 50 million or whatever they want to do, or to a million or whatever business stage they are. And I like to say to them, well, that's lovely for you, for the people in this room who want to get rich. But frankly, none of your customers care that you want to be rich. None of your employees care that you want to be rich, right? What's the compelling reason beyond that? And so that's a really important question. Um, the other big question, this isn't in Simon Sinek's Golden Circle, but I think it's crucial to brand building, is who do we exist to serve? Who are, what's that type of, of, of either company or individual that we're trying to serve? Um, how should we show up for them? You know, we're talking principles here, we're talking strategic principles. You need to align around these, and then that goes, come, goes down through the organization. And finally, at the highest level, what is our value proposition? What's our offer at the high level? So I'm not talking products here, because you, know, you have a brand offering, and then you can drill down into your specific products and the markets you're trying to sell them in. We're talking at the highest level. All your product offerings would, should ladder into some of the answers to these, and they should all ladder into the big idea. So it can be complicated, and this is the problem that I think we face, particularly when we talk about strategy, that we come out the back of an exercise like this with a 60 slide deck with all these things defined, and we're back to the problem again of nobody really getting what, we get, you know, what we're trying to do here. So that's why I like to boil it all down to the big idea. That becomes the face of our strategy, that becomes the thing, and then all of these things might start laddering into it. Your big idea really needs to sit in the middle of those things. What the company ambitions are, and the truth of what our people are about, what the competitors are doing, what the customers want, and ultimately our category here, and we sit, you know, something, somewhere in between there, the big idea should, should lie. Your positioning in relation to those things. It is hard, the work is hard, that's why it's interesting, you know, when you still see some of those big ideas that I put out, people are just like, really? You know, you spent six months on that. It's like, yeah, because I'm doing all this work with the teams. We're collaborating. We're really trying to understand it. And so that's why you should, uh, you know, you need to do that work. Uh, if you're a smaller business, it will take you a lot less time. You'll be pleased to know. How do you activate it, though? What do you do with it once we've got to it? Well, I've sort of hinted at a few ideas there. What I find in businesses, particularly as you sort of scale and you grow, is that you'll recruit people. And you'll find that there's, in my head, it's quite simple, there's two types of business leader. There's business leaders really focused within the organization, like HR or people teams um, and operations, and people trying to make the efficiencies better. And there's people that tend to focus without. These are not exclusive, this is generalization, but there's then business development, sales, marketing that we're in, customer success and so on. They're focused without the organization. And as I've mentioned before, the big idea should unite everybody. It should influence, in my humble opinion, and all of these strategies should ladder into it. You find that most businesses have documented strategies around their commercials, obviously, like we talked about business plans earlier, like how are they going to be sustainable and grow financially? That should ladder into the big idea. Um, and it sh the big idea should influence it. Your com communication strategy, how are you kind of con communicating out to the market and internally? Your sales and marketing strategies. So that could be you know, your lead gen or your demand gen strategies. That should all be influenced by the big idea. How are you going to attract and generate customers? Your customer strategy. Once someone signs up to be a customer, how are you designing their experience from onboarding to servicing to then offboarding? That should inf the, that, the big idea should influence all of that. Your people strategy, how are you going to attract and retain top talent? Your employer brand, if you like. 
Again, it should influence that. And finally, how are you going to continue to be relevant and innovate in the market? The big idea should really flow through that and it should be activated through all of those things. Now, some of you might be thinking, flipping it, Matt, I've only got a one-man band here. So don't worry if you're still at that stage. But you will instinctively do a lot of these things yourself. Um, if you're a bigger business, you have to split that up. It becomes more formal and more red tape and so on. But that's the way of it. I thought, I'm at the marketing conference, so how can I make it relevant to marketing people? Well, this is one, um, a tool I tend to use when I'm working with marketing teams to activate uh, the big idea. So we've got the big idea at the top here. This is um, a brand messaging framework, like how are we going to ping out or communicate out our core messages throughout our things. You've know, got to do a bit of thinking about this. So you've got your big idea. What's the value of that to the prospect? What are the benefits to them? And then what are the reasons to believe? It's quite a handy way of dividing up uh, a way of thinking. And then what you'll do, oh, that's funny. What you'll do, is that giving me a hint? Why is that turning off? That's a green box. Oh, thank you, Ross. Uh, what, what you can do then, you see, is you can, you can kind of take the, um, the benefits and, and run, say, for example, your LinkedIn. You could talk about various benefits and reasons to believe on a regular, ongoing basis. So it helps you s divide things up. But notice, they all add into the value and the big idea that you're trying to do, trying to uh, communicate. It's in the booklet, by the way, if you're taking notes. Um, again, this is another sort of um, model that I like to use. This is your kind of your customer experience, your big brand ideas in the middle. And then you've got like before someone's a customer, so they become aware, consider, make a decision. They become a customer. So we're going to onboard them. We're going to service them. We're going to offboard them. And then we're going to hopefully they're going to become an advocate of us over time. The big I brand idea should be in the middle of di diagrams like this. So when you're briefing your team, you're like, hey, we're here to create a better tomorrow. And the way that we're going to do that is through these seven stages. Let me go and talk to you about stage number one. So they, they immediately understand how the, idea, the, the, the initiatives within awareness, for example, ladder into why we're all here. If you're a leader and you're getting up on a platform and you're talking at your all hands, if you've got you know, enough people to do that, you start with the big idea. Because we're here to achieve this, this is what's been happening this quarter. This is what we're going to do in 2024. So, they're the sort of ways that you can leverage a big idea once you've got it, once you can communicate it, and once you can powerfully um, uh, leverage it to drive all of your business initiatives, all of your strategic thinking right down into tactics. So my parting words to you, I'm on time, look at that, Dan said, get it in five. I said, I'll get it before five, don't worry. My parting words for you is manage your meaning. Take it seriously. This stuff does not happen by accident. We have to do the work. We have to step back, work on the business, not in the business. We need to be strategic. And, uh, you know, it's not easy. But do it. And trust me, the, 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 the profits will then flow. Uh, but it all starts with the big idea. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, just one thing. Just one thing. Just one thing. Um, I can't promise to give you a free ebook, although I might give just a random one about, I don't know, whatever to you that I'll find somewhere else. But please do follow me on LinkedIn. I love to connect with people. I've got various things. I've got a book. I've got a podcast, various things. We love to, love to connect. If you've got any questions or, 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 or anything, always happy to try and get back to you. Although I did notice, Lizzie, I was very embarrassed because I looked up Lizzie earlier and apparently Lizzie connected with me in 2018 or something and I didn't respond. So I felt like right, a right jerk. So I've apologized to Lizzie and I apologize public again but I will communicate I will respond if you message me from now I promise thank you everybody thank you very much you.